Hello, and welcome to the Walmart Warriors presentation on DNA Compute. My name is Michael Wu, and today I'll be going through the background of DNA Computers. I'll start with a short history on how DNA Compute began. Pictures on your right is Leonard Alderman. And in 1994, he realized that DNA nuclear bases could be used to solve logical problems and created a proof of concept use of DNA to solve many computational problems. Later, in 1995, the idea of DNA based memory appeared when Eric Baum proposed an immense amount of data that could be stored in DNA strands. Now, how did DNA based computers even work? Well, normally with the classical computers, the ones that you and I are using right now, we have logic gates. For example, we have diodes or transistors that consist of simple switches. With DNA, the way the molecules are used is very similar. They can be triggered to bind and release from each other to create a circuit of a sort of logic gate of their own. In one method, called DNA strand displacement, which is the image above, you have an input strand of DNA that binds to a DNA logic gate, and this displaces a third strand of DNA, which serves as an output DNA strand. In another method, input DNA binds to a DNA logic gate and releases enzymes to cut other strands of DNA, which go and bind and, and release, and this creates sort of a chain reaction. Now, why should we use DNA-based computers? After all, don't we have perfectly capable laptops and computers sitting on our desks right now? Well, yes. As of now, DNA-based computers are still relatively new and have not seen use as substitutes for classical computers. Their speed does not even come close to our current models. However, they show promise of capabilities way beyond our normal classical computers. If DNA can store an entire genome in the nucleus of a cell, think about how much we could store if we use it to store computer data the density of info would be unimaginable compared to our current electronics. Also, our current computers with silicon chips can only perform one operation at a time. It's been refined so small and so fast that you don't notice it normally. But as problems with higher complexity arise, more and more computational power is required to get these done. And the greatest promise of DNA computing is that it can have parallel computing capability. Independent of each other, DNA strands can simultaneously represent different possible solutions, and this will overcome the problem of needing computational power. And some of you may be thinking, isn't quantum computing supposed to do the same exact thing with this parallel computing? Yes, that's true, but com quantum computers require extremely precise conditions. They need to be at almost absolute zero temperature to name one, and they're tremendously expensive. Whereas DNA molecules can stay stable at room temperature, and synthesizing DNA molecules has been getting cheaper and cheaper as time goes on. And we've been researching DNA for so long that we have expert techniques like CRISPR to manipulate all this DNA. Of course, it will be a long time, if ever, if DNA computers actually replace our current classical computers. However, they show a lot of promise. Now, on to Pranav, who will talk to you about the recent successes of DNA computing. With DNA computing being a relatively new field, many practical uses have not been found for this new technology. However, proof of concept exists given that a few major breakthroughs have been made in the field. The first of these recent successes occurred in 1994 when the Hamiltonian path problem was solved by Leonard Edelman, who Michael spoke of in the previous slide. The fact that this NP-complete complex problem was able to be solved using DNA served as the, as the basis of the rest of the field and as a proof of concept of its ability to be used in many currently explored parallel computing applications. A few of the most important breakthroughs that have occurred since the field's inception are as follows. 1. DNA-based crypt cryptography and steganography. 2. DNA dominant op dom domino operators. And lastly, third, self-assembling repro reprogrammable DNA. DNA-based cryptography has seen much work done because of the possible speed-ups that can be seen given the efficient parallel programming utility which DNA-based computing provides. Novel algorithms for public key encryption as well as conventional steganography have been explored and utilized in small cases. This application of DNA computing can provide significant benefits to us as more efficient, secure cryptographic methods are always greatly appreciated. 
perhaps the most important technology enabling DNA computing to possibly pr proliferate, domino operators and their discovery in 2017 by researchers was a monumental success for DNA-based computing methods. Without getting into the nitty-gritty details of the processes that allow domino operators to function, in essence, they provide us with methods to efficiently monitor memory states of DNA without sequencing it. Furthermore, these domino operators enable the recording of and monitoring of cellular events and can be used to build forms of logic through layering. This advancement represented one of the largest steps in this field since its birth in the 90s. The last major breakthrough occurred when researchers at UC Davis formulated DNA which self-assembled, allowing it to be essentially programmed. The inputs for any of the algorithms ran using this method was initially limited to 6 bits for this research trial. However, the very fact that this was achieved shows the promise of DNA-based computing, and one can always hope for many future advancements to be made to allow for, pra for more practical uses of DNA computing in our lifetimes. DNA computing is a very new development, and different applications are being explored constantly. Molecular nanotechnology researchers have looked into DNA computing and have discovered DNA sequences with functional properties for preventing genes that could be harmful, showing how the use of DNA computing creates potential for curative applications. Other Other research has shown that DNA computing can be used to advance understanding in biology by using the computations to decipher the sequence of large proteins, and by using the DNA computing, it will take much less time. Be because DNA computing is able to work so fast it can hold lots of inf information, it could even be used to compute connecting flight paths around the world or to crack long passwords. Some are even looking into using DNA computers for video games, which would provide a video and audio quality higher than the real world. As you can see, DNA computing can be applied to multiple different uses and is very helpful. Using DNA, you can perform millions of operations at once, allowing complicated problems to be solved in seconds. Another advantage to using DNA computing is its ability to operate quickly but also with less operations. For example, a mix of 1,018 strands of DNA can operate at 10,000 times the speed of advanced supercomputers and by doing less processes. DNA molecules can also store much more information. The data density of DNA molecules is way more than what today's computer hard drives can store in the same space. However, even though DNA computing can be very helpful, it also has some lackings. In order for DNA computing to be useful, you need a lot of resources meaning that if a very complex problem is going to be solved, a lot of DNA is needed. Also, DNA is liable to errors, including mismatches, insertions, and deletions. Thus, it is not always accurate. And of course, DNA computing is new and still being explored, so not everything is known yet. With all of this in mind, DNA computing still has some ethical considerations, which Isabella will now explain. So, we've discussed how DNA computing could be revolutionary in the way scientists solve logical problems and give DNA vast potential applications that may not have been practical with computer-based programming across disciplines in biology. One of these disciplines, in particular genomics, is a rapidly advancing field with no shortage of ethical dilemmas to address. Information-based chemistry as a technology lends itself seamlessly to a growing problem in genomics the storage of sequenced genomes so that they can be used clinically for patients and research. There are many positive implications of having this kind of information for medical caregivers and patients. However, we also need to consider how we decide who has access to that information and how they use it. Should researchers even let you see the genetic information in the first place if it confirms negative aspects about yourself reinforced by societal stereotypes? At that point, should you still be given the results? And how do researchers decide? Can employers have access to your genome? Can schools? Should the government be able to store the genetic information of every US citizen? Why might that be a positive and negative thing? To answer these questions, we need to consider how our genomes and genetic differences might be used to discriminate against others. For example, an individual who is predisposed to alcohol abuse could be refused admission to a job, a school, or health insurance 
depending on who has access to that information and how they are allowed to use it. Uh, additionally, another prevalent issue in genomics today is the issue of patenting a human genome and therefore limiting accessibility to advanced healthcare. In DNA computing, uh, a new dis interdisciplinary field within genomics, we, there are already examples of computing using cellular DNA to improve upon genome edi editing, as mentioned before with the network operator Domino and the potential it has for cancer biology. In synthetic biology, researchers are working to use biocomputing to eventually use molecular hardware and genetic pieces to tap into host metabolism and begin whole cell computations. Now we begin to ask ourselves, are humans crossing moral boundaries by redesigning organisms with synthetic biology techniques? If synthetic biology yields new treatments and cures for diseases, who has access to them in our society? Which again goes back to the issue of patenting a human genome. What are the environmental impacts of introducing modified organisms into the ecosystem? So we have so we have these questions and we have all this rapidly advancing technology that can revolutionize medicine, healthcare, and someday soon, I believe, what it means to be a living being on this earth. These changes are unavoidable and even necessary when we consider who is at stake and the lives at risk. Still, to carry out these in innovations responsibly, there need to be regulations and guidelines for all research being done. I think a good example of a guideline would be the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act of 2008, which protects Americans from discrimination based on their genetic information and in health insurance and employment, along with some federal oversight of high-risk infectious agents used by federally funded research projects like NIH. Uh, under the DURC policy. Still, I think it's up to the scientific community as it grows and advances to take a huge role in educating the majority of people the advances being made in their research and what that means for them, like their stake in it. That way, the majority can dictate how they want these advancements to proceed to keep them from causing harm. Okay. Okay. So now that we know what DNA computing actually is, we can look at the future applications of this that will make research more efficient and effective as well. So, firstly, nanotechnology can very easily be made using DNA-based computers. Uh, if researchers can control DNA in every living cell, uh, they can engineer more efficient nano devices that can be used for almost any field. Uh, as an example, nanotechnology in the medical field will be very helpful in diagnosing patients and finding cures. Also, another application of DNA computing is that it will be far more easier to read and code for DNA directly. This will pave the way for computers to do things like DNA fingerprinting, um, which will make crime scene investigations much easier. Uh, moreover, DNA-based computers will be a cost-effective way to decode the genome of humans as well as other animals. Not only will it be cost effective, but it will, but it will also save lots of time that it normally takes to sequence DNA. Also, the instability, also the instability of DNA-based computing methods could be used to simulate and predict the behavior of complex and random things such as the weather forecast or the economy. On top of that, DNA-based computers will be able to complement the computers of today to make information storage more effective and other computational problems much easier to solve. Finally, because um, different fields such as biology, chemistry, math, and engineering will have to come together to build a DNA computer, uh, the development of these computers will have will advance the understanding of the human genome in all of those fields. Um, all of this can lead to DNA-based products or processes that will help researchers of different fields. These are just some of the uh, future applications that uh, could be possible with um, DNA computing. Um, there are countless more. These are our sources. Thank you for listening to our presentation.